This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1459. Five ways to make weight loss easier through nutrition. Part one by Aidan Muir of idealnutrition.com.au. And I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Monday, and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. Don't forget, we have a bunch of shows where we do this very same thing. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate, so as usual, I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. Oh, and today's article is from a new author for the show. I'll tell you all about Aiden right after the reading. So for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Five Ways to Make Weight Loss Easier Through Nutrition, Part 1 by Aidan Muir of idealnutrition.com.au. I have been a dietitian for around five years now. Throughout this journey, a large percentage of my clients have been those who are looking to lose weight, and there is a ton of stuff I have learned along the way. There is no secret to all of this. Most people would benefit from more knowledge, but that alone is not the answer. No individual behavior change strategy will be suitable for everybody either. No mindset hack will work for everybody. But what I will try to cover in this post are five key things that are universal and that will help most people, regardless of what strategy you are using for weight loss. Higher protein intake. Per calorie, protein is the most satisfying macronutrient. Per gram, that title goes to fat because fat has nine calories per gram and protein only has four calories per gram. We care about satisfaction per calorie more than per gram. This is because we are working backwards from the goal of a calorie deficit, so we are trying to make that as easy as possible. Increasing protein intake obviously still adds calories, just like any other macronutrient. And arguably, that could be counter to the goal of weight loss. But if you are going to have, say, X amount of calories regardless, and you were coming from a lower protein intake, it would make sense to increase that as a percentage of your total calories. For example, somebody who gets 15% of their calories from protein each day while trying to lose weight might find the process easier if they increased it to 35 to 40%. This will leave a person feeling fuller, which makes it easier to eat fewer calories. Protein also has a higher thermic effect. Now, this is not a massive percentage of your total daily energy expenditure, but it does make fat loss a little easier. Maintaining more muscle mass also has some advantages. Muscle helps to keep your basal metabolic rate slightly higher, but not as dramatically as some make it seem. And it could also carry over to higher total daily energy expenditure through other factors, like more calories being burned through exercise. Higher protein intake during a calorie deficit makes it easier to retain more muscle. And this obviously has benefits beyond what I just mentioned. Higher fiber. Fiber is strongly linked with satisfaction as well. The reason for this is because fiber slows digestion. Soluble fiber can also absorb water, which further adds volume and tells your body that you are fuller. Beyond just appetite management, there's a pretty strong correlation between fiber intake and overall positive health outcomes. Obviously, if fiber is taken to an extreme, it's likely to cause gastrointestinal issues like bloating and gas. But as a general rule, it's probably a good idea to slowly build up to the recommended daily fiber intake. To put some numbers on it, standard recommendations for dietary fiber each day are 25 grams for women and 35 grams for men. Another good guideline is 10 to 15 grams of fiber for every 1,000 calories consumed. You could argue for increasing daily fiber intake above these recommendations, but basically, I think it's worth finding a sweet spot where you get minimal GI symptoms while also reaping the benefits of fiber. Volume eating. Volume eating is eating larger volumes of lower calorie foods. This could mean either eating the same number of calories but more food, or fewer calories with the same amount of food. You can see how this would help with weight loss. Because you are eating 
more food and feeling more full while still eating fewer calories, you're gonna achieve a calorie deficit for weight loss. Now, you're probably noticing a common theme with these tips. A lot of them are based on the idea of managing your appetite. If you feel satisfied on lower calories, it makes it easier to stick to. That being said, if you plan on losing a significant amount of weight, hunger is likely gonna be a part of the process. You can implement all these strategies, but if you are either in a large calorie deficit or just an extended one where you get significantly leaner, you are likely to experience hunger at some stage regardless. Part of the process involves embracing a little bit of hunger. A little bit of hunger does not mean starving yourself. It's okay to experience a bit of hunger occasionally. And these strategies are just to help avoid that hunger from becoming excessive. Finding the sweet spot between flexibility versus rigidity. When people come to see me asking for a meal plan, there are two common lines that stand out to me. One, I want a lot of variety so I don't get bored. And two, I want my food to taste good so that it's easy to stick to. I have a bit of a thought experiment for you, though. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Five Ways to Make Weight Loss Easier Through Nutrition by Aidan Muir of idealnutrition.com.au. As a listener of this show, you're here to take charge of your health and wellness. We all want to do the right things for our bodies to have more energy, better sleep, a healthy immune system, you name it. Well, Inside Tracker was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics from MIT, Tufts, and Harvard to help you do just that. Inside Tracker analyzes your body's data with their patented algorithm, and that helps provide you with science backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. It's the only human performance system that integrates real-time physiomarker data from your fitness tracker with your biomarker data. Let Inside Tracker tell you what you need to do and why. Transform your body's data into true, meaningful insights and get customized action plans today. Now, for a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Just go to insidetracker.com/ohd. That's insidetracker.com slash OHD for 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Now, Ideal Nutrition is an in-person and online dietitian service based in Brisbane. Their biggest specialty is body composition improvement with a focus on helping people gain muscle or lose fat. And today's author, Aiden, is a dietitian who prides himself on staying up-to-date with evidence-based approaches to dietetic intervention. Come by idealnutrition.com.au for a lot more. And thank you to the Ideal Nutrition team for letting us share their work. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I really appreciated that Aiden talked about the importance of embracing hunger feelings when trying to lose weight. It seems like he and I have had similar experiences when it comes to patients that want to manage their weight. It may come with the expectation that weight loss will happen without much discomfort. Now, I'm gonna level with you. Like with any behavior change, discomfort is part of the process. Anytime we do something different, whether it's increasing the intensity of our workouts, putting more money into our savings accounts instead of spending it, or replacing a cookie with an extra serving of broccoli, discomfort is part of the process. Same goes for weight loss. Feeling some slight hunger as a form of discomfort is very natural and normal. In fact, when it comes to weight loss, a little bit of hunger usually means you're on the right track. And notice, I keep saying slight or a little bit of hunger. If you feel like you're starving and feel tired all the time, that's very different and not the ideal. But experiencing a little bit of hunger is okay. The good news is it's temporary your body will soon adapt to this decreased calorie intake and the hunger feelings will slowly go away. We just kind of have to push past that little bit of discomfort until that happens. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. 
And don't forget, I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post, so I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.